Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nuno Martins. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, that you gave me to uh, talk a little bit about with you today. Um, I, will, I, will, I will talk a little bit about uh, product development cycle. Um, and uh, let's let's deep dive uh, a little bit on the on uh, what I'll bring with you today. So just uh, some quick intro about me. As I as I've already mentioned, I'm Nuno Martins. This is a, a more hairy version of myself. Uh, I'm currently working at Farfetch, but uh, before uh, Farfetch, I've done uh, a couple of things. All the majority of them all related with product. So I've been working product around 12, 13 years. Uh, I've actually started. Um, studying physics. I'm a physics engineer by, by, by education. And during my last year of, of, of the university, I actually got the opportunity to do some investigation and actually got up to six uh, uh, scientific papers published. But at the same time that I was doing the investigation, I, I founded a, a company, a, a junior company. So it's kind of a university um, uh Thing that you that you do, it's kind of a, a non-profit organization that uh, that mimics a, a, a startup, and you can start uh, working before uh, before time and interact with the uh, with the ecosystem of companies within the university. So I was one of the founders of Knowledge. So you'll be able to check out the links uh, after the after the presentation. We'll be sharing the deck. And once I started that, I understood that I would prefer as my professional uh, career to go into the into the industry. So I started in a company, a small uh, company in, in Portugal uh, called Intelligent Sensing Anywhere, which built products and built the full suite of products. So we built everything from hardware to middleware and to the software. And I've worked into, into all of these types of products. So uh, I started as an innovation manager uh, back then and, and basically I was in working in the R and D department and start working up front of the roadmap. Uh, after that, I've moved to to product manager and I was able to work into different distinct areas, two business areas. Uh, uh, the first one on oil and gas, uh, oil and gas uh, market, and the second one in the utility space. Um, lately, I've been working in Farfetch, uh, um, uh, a company that works operate in the in the in the luxury uh, uh, retail sector and we've been building a, a platform from the cup last couple of years I've been working as a product manager I'm currently a principal product manager uh, working in the in a, a team that is uh, willing to escalate all other product teams so we've been we've been I've been working in farfetch in several different roles uh, um, I've done I've done platform uh, works I've done optimization works and today, my objective is to talk to you a little bit about the things I've learned on the product development cycle. Um, I've been working with, with products and, and customers for quite some time now. And this is kind of my, my view of, uh, so I would say, the main, the main uh, ideas that I've uh, uh, depicted through uh, a traditional product development cycle. So, so most of the times, I'll be focusing in software products, which has been the the things that I've worked more closely in the past, uh, but uh, you can pick up on this uh, um, on these topics and on, on these learnings and apply it. I would say to almost of uh, a product that you do. So the the talk today will be, I would call it a little bit more conceptual and a little bit more uh, mindset oriented. But I still believe that you can pick up one of these things and apply it on a day to day basis. Um, and the first thing that uh, that um, that I like to to and um, how to tell this story, it's about it's about customer obsession. So I believe and I honestly believe that the first thing that we we should do is think customer first uh, all the time. So um, uh, you've probably heard this a little bit more more uh, more and more these days uh, of ditching the term user. Um, actually, the user is typically used uh, about the, the redundancy only in two types of industries, the, the drug industry and the software one. Uh, but that's um, why we, we probably should uh, ditch the, the term uh, user and replace it by, by customer. Uh, and focusing on the customer, it's kind of easy because we're also customers uh, from so many different products. So it's easy to relate on your day-to-day -day because you're actually a customer as well. So uh, if you start thinking like this, it's easy to put yourself in the shoes of the customer what you, that you're serving. And, and as a customer, 
Uh, we typically we typically know these two things. So, and you hear it all the time. So, customers are always right, and typically they 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 know what they want. So, the customer knows what we hope, what what wants. And if you think yourself as a customer, you will also think like like this uh, for for a little bit. Uh, but actually, uh, uh, wherever uh, 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 what we're looking for in product, and I think like this is the caveat and the and the and the brink of the of the of the the beautiful of the work, the beauty of the work that we do is uh, trying to find not what the customer wants or not to give them what they want, but actually finding what the customer needs. So it's like the customer wants to move from A to B. So we you might think that he needs a car. So this is the kind of uh, the kind of a uh, uh, example that you'll hear on every textbook. And our work is trying to understand if you actually need the car or a bicycle would suffice or a motorcycle or some public transportation just for the sake of a, a simple argument. Um, and and behind every, I would say, customer need, there's typically a problem to be solved. And this is the first um, the first mindset uh, uh, change or the mindset shift that you should have when you're working in product. And, and it's to be problem oriented. So uh, if you start with a problem and start building your case with a product, what you'll start to see is uh, is that you'll start to make the simple question. So uh, why does the customer need to go from A to B? How does it go? When does it go? And, and this will start creating the, the foundations uh, of your problem. So you'll start by framing your, your problem. It's typically the stage of the product cycle. So the early stages where you start making the question. So you can, you should use every, every tools that you need uh, to collect the insights from your customers. So you need to understand uh, how can you influentiate them? How can you understand them, know their market, know their what's available for them from a competitive perspective. So it's about knowing uh, your space and know where you operate. So what is the, the competitive landscape? And with all these things in hand, you'll start framing the problem by creating a problem statement. So uh, why does this person need to go from A to B just to, to, to oversimplify it? But that, that's, that's where you, if you start thinking about it, that's when you you involve all the, the the inputs and the insights from 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 building products. So you will need to understand. Uh, you'll need to to have uh, the, the the competitive landscape. So you'll need to understand what happens and how the other competitors operate. You'll need to talk and engage with your users. So you'll probably use your user research teams or you do your own research depending on the the, the things that you have available. Uh, you'll get into analytical. You you'll try to understand how much, how, when. So get every analytical data points that you'll get and you'll be able to managing uh, and, and gathering all the insights, the uh, quantitative and qualitative insights uh, uh, through the hand. So with all these, these things in hand, you start drafting and, and, and text writing your problem statement to what you're trying to solve. And there's, there's this kind of a three guidelines that you can use to understand if your problem space is set if your problem is uh, well established. It's just trying to understand or trying to ask someone uh, if it's crystal, crystal clear, if you can actually explain explain it easily. So if you find yourself uh, in doubt when trying to explain what problem you have, it's probably because the problem is not refined. So you're still not understanding it fully. And also on the other side that is listening, it's actually uh, easy to understand. Can everyone understand it? If it's uh, too much of a complex problem that only an expert uh, understands, that's probably still not crystal clear as well. So if you can try to apply these three things, you get uh, clarity over over your problems on uh, on the on the yellow stages of the of the product development cycle. And with this clarity in, in terms of the problem that you aim to solve. Um, we can, and this is something that I can actually bring to you that you can use in your day to day is try to move from the problem to the hypothesis. And so this is all about giving structure to your product development site. Use this as an artifact or a tool that will allow you to uh, create a line of thought and focus on the outcome uh, instead of just uh, uh, just shooting problems and try to 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 get deliveries over it. So. It's all about um, 
focus on the outcomes and get a structured way of kind of thinking and moving forward in terms of what problems are you trying to solve with the product that you're building. And basically, you can use this kind of a template. So this is, uh, uh, I would say, uh, used in quite so many companies and industries, but you can structure on these four things. So based on the insights that you've collected in the beginning, so the ones that I mentioned, we believe that this product change, so the thing that you want to do, will result in such a behavioral change as measured by uh, an immeasurable impact. And you can depict this into four stages. So the insight, you tell about the problem space that you have, uh, the product change, the product change is actually the solution that you have uh, that you that you aim to to, to test this, this hypothesis. And on the right hand of this of this graph, you have the expectations and uh, the impact. So the expectation is is what to ex do you expect to happen if you create this product or if you uh, create this new feature to your product. So it's the the, the behavioral change of your customer uh, uh, when you introduce this 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 feature or this new product. And the impact is actually how success looks like. And this is this is um, uh, very important to understand how success looks like because this will allow you to understand if the problem is solved or not, and you can move into the next one. So it's kind of a the the, the finishing line of of the race. Uh, and with all these things in hand, so uh, you you have clarity on your problem, you're set and you're written on your hypothesis using that template, for instance, it's time to, to move to the solution space and start putting your hypothesis into test. And uh, this is a, a, a something that um, I typically learn to do uh, while develop, developing products. And when it comes to solutions, um, one easy way to start with is uh, to start with quantity. So imagine that you uh, frame your problem, you have your problem statement there, you start to uh, building, uh, you, you have written your hypothesis, but for the product change, you want to test as many solutions as possible. So let's say we pick a number and we start with 10 solutions from this hypothesis. So let's uh, write them all and start from there. And in every product change, we'll understand what type of solutions we can use for, for, for testing the hypothesis that we've written. Um, and the second trick is how early can we apply the solution? So typically when I, we, we, we are discussing solutions, we always tend to fall in into the delivery mode, so uh, into the development cycle. And this is pretty natural for a, a product manager that's hands-on and gets uh, stuck in the day-to-day. -day. So that's pretty uh, natural that you always rely and you'll go for uh, trying to develop all the solutions or thinking uh, when thinking solutions, you think of development. So picking up on your engineering team and develop it from, from scratch. But uh, the, the exercise is exactly the, the opposite. So try to think on how early on the stage of, of the product development cycle, you can actually apply this solution. So uh, do not focus on the development. So do focus on trying to understand if you can do a survey, if you can do some prototypes, if you can go just out and ask your customers if this solutions will work or use data or uh, use a research to validate the solutions that you have so that you did not did depend uh, uh, to uh, develop each and all of them. So hence why it's starting with quantity. Uh, and once you start to narrow it down, you can start adding some other factors, factors like how much it will cost. So uh, we need to be pragmatic about the costs uh, uh, or the effort of our solution. So this will be a balance of uh, return on investment uh, versus versus the effort uh, of, of, of what how much it will cost to to develop your your feature. And again, uh, as we've seen on the hypothesis, so the, the definition of, of, of success will help you to understand if this will be a good solution to go for to test for your hypothesis. So balance the complexity of implementing your, your solutions against the outcome that you will get from them. Uh, and this, this uh, balance, so how much you can get from it and how much it will cost, will actually give you some guidance on prioritization, prioritizing your, your, your solution. So if from the starting 10, you finish with two or three that you try to develop or are, let's say, on the pole position to be developed, you start to do this type of refinement in terms of complexity and uh, uh, outcome that you'll get. And you, this will help you with your, with your um, uh, prioritization uh, exercise. And just 
to the next slide. And setting for success early in, in the game. So this is why I've mentioned that this part of the of the hypothesis lane. So uh, how does success look like? And if when you're writing your, your problem, you set up your hypothesis, so you have like these solutions, for each one of these uh, uh, solutions, you start to narrow it down, but you've already decided and defined what success looks like when you're uh, write, written your, your hypothesis. Uh, so as much as early you do it in the game, this will remove some of the biases that you'll uh, get when starting to get attached to some of the solutions. So uh, set up the, the success as early as you do the hypothesis will help you to uh, have clarity on when you need to hand and to hover. Uh, so it's all about removing the subjectiveness, uh, subjectiveness of the exercise. So try to understand what metrics uh, will move the needle and uh, to where you want it. So uh, how does these metrics are connected to your strategy within your company, uh, within your uh, product that you're working currently? So uh, qualitative, uh, a qualitative approach into the success will remove uh, 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 the IPO effect. So uh, data will, will will help you on to get on on this onto these definitions. And if you don't have it on your hand, try to work it before your your product is out there. So try to put this almost as a as a requirement to have this data so that you can actually validate if your product is successful or your feature is successful. Um, so the objective is try to understand of how much value you are driving and. Uh, looking into types of metrics, what customer success metrics are you leveraging? So uh, remember that you can go for business metrics, and this this will something that you'll probably are facing already, or or or, or if not, great. If you're already looking into customer success metrics, you, that's a that's a great way to go. But try to move as much as you can from business metrics into customer success metrics. So these will be metrics that are uh, oriented towards your your customer and not towards your 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 uh, uh, simple day-to-day uh, -day running business. So uh, you can, for instance, increase as much as conversion, but uh, the customers are not coming back to the site. They're just buying once. So simple definition. And probably what you want is to have customers returning back on your on, on your website. So try to focus on what the success looks like, how it fits into your strategy, and start defining these metrics into terms of customer success. Uh, also, as important to define the success, so the, how the happy path looks like, uh, some of the, some are, I would call it almost as a risk management, is try to define when you actually need to stop. So if you're shipping something, if you're delivering something to your customers, uh, define what is the stopping point and if you need to stop your product or turn down your feet, turn off your feature. Uh, so uh, not only define the happy path, but define uh, the, the stopping condition. So how much you're willing to lose in terms of uh, putting your, your feature out there. So this will, this will avoid uh, difficult uh, challenges that you may have once the product is live, when, when you start to collecting data, which will be uh, to know when to turn off the plug or to know when to move to the next thing that you need to fix. Um, if you have the stopping condition defined up front. So as I've, as I've mentioned to you, so to, to you uh, uh, until now. So this is about uh, try to, to to define the product development cycle to th these three different stages. So uh, we've, went, we've been discussing the product discovery. We've been, been discussing the build up with uh, with the solution space uh, and uh, with, uh, the, with, the, with the solution space and the delivery mode. That's actually when you're building it. Uh, the exercise and the challenge that I post to you basically try to move as much as the left as you can on this exercise and invest in your time uh, as early stages uh, as, as much as you can. So, because if you ended up being caught in the delivery, you will not be, uh, it will be much harder for you guys to check the big picture of, of the whole ahead. So if you invest more on defining the problem, creating clarity of, over uh, uh, what the success looks like for your, for your product or your feature and, test your solutions and have a good set of solutions, you can actually have almost your product backlog created and understand when, when you need to stop. So this is all about uh, moving as much as you can from the delivery mode into the exploratory mode or uh, the solutionizing mode. As much to the left, 
the less it will cost to test solution and the more informed and outcome focused you will be when doing your, your role as a product manager on, on your day to day. Trying to speak a little bit about the delivery mode because we want to move or invest more on the other modes, but this is also important. And, and delivery, uh, delivery, it's all about building it together. So uh, there are like a couple of things that I that I, that I do and, and and when discussing with with new teams and new joiners uh, that I like to, to to work out well about. It's about prepping for for the delivery. So uh, start as much to tackle risks upfront. So it's about preparation and risk management. Is the product or the feature that you're buying, that, you, that you're doing viable? So it can it be done? Do you have any like compliance issues upfront? Uh, is it usable? So can you do some user research to validate it's usable? Is it valuable? It's actually, um, it's actually uh, coping with any market need or any uh, um, uh, data uh, driven friction that you find out on your Funnel or on your on your data set, and is it feasible? It's actually can it be done within the reasonable amount of time to 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 cope with the market need that you have? So try to 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 have these answers uh, um, and these questions uh, answered and cleared uh, with uh, with your team, and not only as you as product manager, but all this uh, a product team around it. So uh, having the product manager, the product designs, and the engineers regardless if it's your engineering team or is it your engineering lead. So these three would be, I would say, the heart of the of the product development cycle. But in order for you to understand and to try to line out this, these risks up front, you will need to have the input from user research and also the, the data sets from product analytics. So this will depend a lot of on how your companies organized, but uh, the, the core of product development, you should have like this product design and engineering mindset or this skills, and they should be complemented with, a, with a, the, the research or user research and product analytics. So it does not matter if it's a, a one team for each one of the areas or if a product manager needs to cope with doing the research itself and looking into the data itself. It's all about, again, mindset. So make sure that you have these skills in place and that you have them represented by, um, by your or on your day to day while while creating your your products. And again, these th there are many ways of developing products or, or doing uh, software product development. You can go agile. You can go uh, even within agile, going Scrum. So there are so many things. But uh, these these tools and processes only serve to solidify the communication, uh, so that you can actually have. Uh, all the things that you need available for everyone who may need it. So my 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 simple my simple trick in here is, when in doubt, just over communicate. So you have this you've defined the the core team of of your product development. So over communicate with them. It's better to 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 say the same thing twice twice rather than just assuming that someone would would understand uh, uh, what you have uh, trying to say or what you're trying to mean. And, and as a rule of thumb, so you can you can use this rule of thumb in terms of documentation because uh, we know that product managers tend to have a, a high admin part to do. So when trying to creating or writing down some of the requirements and stories, whatever you you need to, to to write down on your on your on your organization, so you can use a rule of thumb trying when trying to think of the team if they're strong or co-located you'll probably need less documentation but if the teams are weaker or they're just new guys getting around uh, uh, or working together with by the first time or if they're a distributed team as as we've seen on this this reality that we're going much uh, more uh, distributed teams uh, these will probably require much more documentation rather co-locating one uh, so so in terms of, of, of getting it done, so the execution stage is actually when typically the product manager can have some vacation from the development team. It's, it's when, you, when you do the, the engineers do their work. So you will be there for the admin work or to clarify some of the things on the day-to-day, -day, but it's actually a great time for you to uh, go back and do some product work to focus uh, uh, quite uh, highly on the exploration stuff or trying to understand what type of outcomes you'll get and what will be the next steps in terms of your development. And once it's done, it's it's um, 
it's about time to to put it out there and to put your product up to up to the real world and be be tested test your original hypothesis so uh, shipping your product to 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 your customers and how they'll get it this will be also part of your of your product development cycle so trying to think of your lot plans how you'll get the the product or the feature accessible to your customers how you'll get feedback from from them after it's out there uh, and when it's done well celebrated so this is something that i've seen uh, not or that it's not happening as much as it probably probably should but once it's there celebrate the fact that it's out there uh, because uh, it's hard to do product if it was not hard to do product. We'll probably not ha do not have uh, this type of organization, this type of event, uh, and we'll have a lot of more people doing it and sharing content about it. Um, but celebrate when one thing is done. But don't don't forget that uh, using almost this SpaceX analogy, uh, you need to focus on the landing. So shipping something is 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 great, and you 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 should you should celebrate uh, when you ship something. But uh, you will only validate your or or understand if your definition of success was correct when there's actually a landing. So it's about it's about uh, you can you can define that the customer needs to go from A to B. You can um, uh, design find out that the best solution from for the user, for the customer to get from A to B is by uh, delivering him a car. You'll build the car. You, Give him the car, so you celebrate that you uh, uh, sold the car to the to the customer. But you actually understand if your development once was successful, if if customer is going from A to B uh, on a on a smooth and efficient or on a fast way, as as depending on on what was the what were the features that you that you define. So focus on the landings, trying to. Uh, that these landings represent the validation of your definition of success. And remember that um, learnings can uh, can and will happen uh, regardless if your product meets your your um, your definition of success or don't. So understand what went well and address what went wrong and learn both from uh, success and failure. So if you have been learning from all of this, learn, having failures, uh, it's, and if you fail, try to fail fast. So try to understand what's going wrong fast so that you can correct your course and, and, and pivot your strategy. So this is about uh, the beauty of, uh, of the learning. So you will not only evolve as your product, not only if something goes well, but if something goes wrong, you can also evolve the product as well and move from this uh, wrong into into changing or pivoting your, your strategy and understand that that was not the right path to, to move forward. So a course correction is also a piece of learning. So something that went goes wrong does not does not mean that that your your product uh, 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 is not meeting what what you should expect. It's, all, it's actually a learning process. Um, remember that this is about the journey and of your product development cycle. So trying to keep record of these learnings and these hypotheses that you built in. And if you're doing this well and on a, on a good cadence and a, and a cyclical way, this information, these learnings will actually uh, help you driving your product uh, forward. So they will be building your product roadmap. They will be informing your decisions and they will be informing your decisions on top of data, on top of uh, customer insights. And you'll actually understand how much value you're, 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 you're delivering. So just trying to, to, to wrap it up, we're almost on time, on top of time. So I would probably try to have these main takeaways that you'll get from today. Is try to uh, always have clarity over your problems. So Try to be as crystal clear as much as you can with your problems. Um, move from discovery instead of delivery, and start looking into landings instead of looking into into launch into launches uh, as as per your uh, your success measurements. Um, that's that's about it. So feel free to to shoot some some uh, some questions. Um, uh, again, always sharing the, the the deck with you and my contact as well. And and thank you for for the opportunity and thank you for listening. And see you all around.